Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to question number 2 of AFM pre-September 2023 mock. My first video, I've discussed question number 1 where I've discussed net present value. This question is going to focus on adjusted present value, APV. Make sure that you go through the exhibits and the requirement before you watch this video so that it saves a lot of your time because I'm not going to go through each exhibit and read in detail. I have already read it. Okay. I'm only going to tell you how to pick important points from the exhibit and link it to your requirements. So here, if you see, this is different to question number one, because in question number one, if you have, if you can recall, we had BSOP calculator, black short option pricing model calculator. Why? Because in that question, we had real options. Here, it is only two response options, word processor and spreadsheet. So calculations, you have to do it in spreadsheets and writing, you have to do in word process. This is a 25 marks question. Still, professional marks will come here. Okay. So first, we'll quickly go through the requirements before we go through the three exhibits. This is going to be less intense compared to question number one because it's for 50 marks. Okay. So first requirement is you need to calculate APV. Directly, they have given you no doubt, which is for 12 marks. And not only that, you have to recommend and recommend two requirements, okay, whether the project should be accepted or not. That means if your APV is positive, you accept the project. If it's negative, you do not accept the project. Simple. Coming to B, your professional marks is for B, part B. This is a discussion question. You need to use your word processor to write it, okay. This is about <coughs> Discuss the factors before deciding whether to approve the funding decision or not for this project. Okay. Excluding the bank. You have to take all the other capital providers. So in your exhibit three, they have given you the capital providers. Okay. And five marks for your professional skills. Okay. That is all your professional skills except communication will be tested in question number two and three. Remember that. Only communication skill will be tested in question number one because there you have to write a report. But when it's when it comes to question number two and three, you don't have to write a report. That's why no communication. But yes, you have analysis and evaluation. You have skepticism and commercial argument. Okay. Now coming to exhibit. So we are going to read each exhibit. Exhibit one is about the case study. Okay. So this is about a food manufacturer okay descript companies of food manufacturer and now they have discussed that for a long period of time they were having a gearing ratio okay very high it is more than the industry ratio also so now they are planning to reduce this because too much gearing is not good your financial risk is very high so now they are they are planning a strategy to turn this around okay so now they want to reduce the debt. So how are they going to do this? They are going to finance by having a right issue and asset disposal. They are going to raise finance by disposing their asset and going for right issue rather than just taking a loan. Okay. <coughs> so after doing this, gearing ratio now becomes equal to the industry average. Okay. But still share price suffers. Even though gearing ratio reduces, share price is going to suffer. Okay. And also, this company's credit rating is downgraded, which is not a good thing. Sorry, downgraded, which is not a good thing. Okay. And they have identified, CEO has identified an opportunity to relocate their manufacturing plant to another location. Okay. Now, two. So, with A, See, exhibit A is just a basic information about the company, what industry it is, what is its strategy, currently how it is doing, how it will be in the future. Almost for every question in ACC, it's, that's how it is structured. Exhibit 1 is always like that. You don't get much information for calculation from exhibit 1. Okay. But rest all you need. <clears throat> so exhibit 2, project cash flow and funding. This clearly tells you that you need to take all your numbers from exhibit 2 for your requirement 1 to calculate APV. Okay, as you can see here, 
I'm going to close exhibit one as I don't need it right now. But you need exhibit one. How? When you're writing, when you're recommending, please check what industry that company is. Check currently what are their strengths and weakness. Check what are the prospects <coughs> of this company. How long can they grow into the future? That's why you need exhibit one. Okay. Now, as you can see, you have been given the free cash flow for four years. So you need this to calculate APV. Okay. As it is, you have to take it. This project is for four years. You have been given free cash flow and investment is 120 million. Okay. Next, this is how they are going to finance it. This 120 is made up of disposal of asset 20, right issue 10 million, subsidized loan at 3.5% 40, bank loan 9% 50. Okay, together 120. Now, the bank loan is repaid in equal annual installments over this four year. Okay, that means you have to do a cash flow for this bank loan over four years because you have repaid installments. <coughs> and Issue cost of 2% are payable on gross external financing. Remember, gross external financing. What is gross external financing? Finance that you have taken externally. If you have taken a right issue, it's external. If it's a subsidized loan, it's external. If it's a bank loan, it's external. So, in short, except the disposal of existing manufacturing, the rest three are external financing only this is internal financing so when you are taking two percent of the loan i mean of the finance you have to deduct this 20 from 120 okay and then take because external two percent of external so two percent of hundred and gross external finance and not allowable for corporation debt. issue costs are payable out of available cash reserves remember <coughs> why am i telling you this this, I will repeat this point again when I go to issue cost. Okay. Now, additional information. Additional information, corporation tax is 20%. Then your equity beta is 1.418. Debt equity ratio, 1 is to 5. 1 is debt, <coughs> 5 is equity. Okay. Risk-free rate is 3%. Market risk premium is 9%. Everything is given here. And third one, this you need for your requirement too. Okay. As I told you, they told what are the factors needed to decide the funding other than the bank, the capital provider. So, this three are the capital providers in this case study. One is external shareholder, one is founding director, the other one is subsidized loan provider. So, this you need for your requirement too. So, I'm not going to read this right now. When I solve my requirement too, I can read. See, so there are two ways you could solve this question, okay? Either read all the exhibits or just read those exhibits which are required for requirement one because i'm going to solve obviously uh, requirement one okay oh so whatever the way you choose okay it's up to you but how i do is i first i only read those exhibits which is required for the requirement which i'm doing currently for example i'm going to solve requirement one right i'm going to calculate apv i don't need exhibit three for apv right so i'm not going to read it also i read when i do start doing my requirement too this saves a lot of time because if i read everything okay high chances are that i will forget also what i've read then i have to read it again so it wastes time so i don't do that that's my choice but it's up to you anyway so we'll close and we'll only keep our exhibit two open on the screen okay now tell me how are you going to solve this question first For APV, we first need to calculate our base case net present value. It's compulsory. So, <coughs> for base case net present value, we need cash flows, inflow and outflow. So, we have our four free cash flow. So, you just have to take this four, this four free cash flow for the four year and you need to discount them. Discount them. That means you need a factor. You need a discount factor. You are not given the discount factor. Are you? No. So that you have to find. So now you know what is your first thing. You have to find cost of capital. Is it cost of capital here? Think. No. When it comes to APV, when it comes to base case net present value, you don't calculate cost of capital. You calculate cost of equity. You 
the discounting factor is cost of equity okay so we have to find cost of equity tell me from which piece of information you can calculate cost of equity it's down below it is from here you need your equity beta you need debt equity ratio you need free risk free rate and you need market risk premium and yes tax <coughs> so from here this is your first place you are going to work on you need to find your cost of equity not capital so tell me in that cost of equity what is the starting place tell me you need what you need beta okay which beta you need equity beta or asset beta that's another question you need equity beta or asset beta if you are very sure if you know the definition very properly of equity beta and asset beta this will not be a problem for you but if you struggle let me tell you if you struggle in equity beta and asset beta then you are going to lose a lot of marks on your other areas as well because your capital goes wrong cost of capital goes wrong then whatever your discounter goes wrong your apb goes wrong net sorry base case net present value goes wrong and finally apb is wrong so think carefully one small mistake is going to affect on multiple places <coughs> you need asset beta we usually take equity beta and put it in our capital asset pricing model capm to get cost of equity but now i'm telling you we need asset beta not equity beta why because for base case net present value means it's 100% equity there is only business risk no financial risk so asset beta means only business risk no financial risk there is no gearing no debt no debt means asset beta that's why we need to find asset beta to discount okay so now we are given equity beta through this we can find asset beta we have the formula go to fab formula sheet open your afm formula and see here asset beta formula is given okay so you don't have to write the formula in your answer nowhere now in the spreadsheet no in the word processor not required you just have to perform the function okay so first i'm going to use the open the spreadsheet i have done the calculations before and i have kept it the reason is this saves time okay first time if i come to do it takes a little bit of uh, time for me to search here there so i've kept it ready but again i'm going to redo the calculation for you to show you so first i have written ungeared cost of equity okay it should be ungeared no debt base case net present value is 100% equity so we have to find asset beta i've written i think you can see let me expand it for you so it is uh okay now you can see okay so now asset beta is the first thing okay so i have got this calculations i will show you the functions here so what i have done here first i have taken the equity beta multiplied it by the value of equity because according to the formula go back to the formula and see it is market value of equity <coughs> so market equity is 5 remember 5 1 is to 5 debt is 1 equity is 5 then i have taken the total of debt plus equity so equity is 5 okay divide by 5 plus 1 1 is the debt into 0.8 why 0.8 because after tax tax is 20% after tax it will be 80% so you have to multiply that one that debt by 80% okay 1 into 0.8 plus 5 in the numerator then if you press enter you will be getting sorry you will be getting 1.222 now let me tell you asset beta should always be less than your equity beta it can never be more than equity beta because equity beta has both debt okay both business risk and financial risk financial risk means debt it's geared so how can it be less than asset beta you see here it's sorry uh, i'm sorry It's one point four one eight. So this is equity. So asset will be little less than that, not too much. Okay, range matters a lot. This will tell you. This 
so it's 1.222 should be less than 1.418 sometimes when you do calculations if you try to do this calculation in one go and if you have not put bracket here see here then you might get a number more than 1.412 then you know you are wrong so this is a way to test yourself after this okay so this i'm going to put in my capital asset pricing model this 1.222 which is asset beta, I'm going to multiply this with risk-free rate, which is 9%. Sorry, not risk-free rate. Multiply with the risk pre, uh, market risk premium. Risk premium was 9% plus risk-free rate, 3%. So multiply by 9 plus 3%. Enter 14%. It, it came up to something, uh, 13 point something, or 14 point, I've rounded up. Okay. How did you round up? You can go here, format cell, go here and just click this. Because it's a percentage, you can go here and click the 0%. It will show you whole number. Okay, so that's how I got 14%. So now using this 14%, I'm going to discount my free cash flow. You can see here, I have written the free cash flow. Year 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Year 0 is the investment, minus 120. Then all your free cash flow, just type here. Okay. Let me tell you. I've always told you, you shortcut wherever you can, this saves time. Okay. So rather than manually discounting each by 14% like this. Okay. What I've done, I've used the formula of net present value. Yes, you can use it. So I'm going to show you how to use it here. Okay. I'm going to redo this again. So it will be equal to NPV, net present value bracket always put your percentage first it is 14 percent so 0 0.14 comma you have to choose one to whatever the year not zero because zero is never discounted so this for you enter okay after you get this you have to deduct this with investment which is 120 so 115 minus 120 is 4 point minus 4.51 because investment is more than inflow so your base case net present value is minus 4.51. So what, what do you tell? Uh, what is your recommendation? You don't accept the project. Yes, it's negative, but this is only base case net present value. You don't decide using this. You have to calculate APV, okay? <coughs> and the formula, also you can see the formula from here in case, in case you forgot the formula, okay? Go here and workspace help. You see, I've already opened it up for you. So here you can see net present value is equals to rate. Rate means your discount factor. It needs to be in decimal. If it's 10%, see here, it's 0 0.1. If it's 20, 0 0.2, like that. Comma, value 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever. All your cash inflow. And remember, it starts with year 1. Okay? Because year one, you finally deduct that year zero. Okay, you don't discount year zero. That's how you do. Okay, now you got this. So now we are going to find APV. So what I've done for APV, okay, don't check this answer right now. 3.28, yes, it's positive. Final answer is we accept the project. But you have to know how we arrived to that. So I'm going to teach you all. So what I've done is with this base case net present value, you have to add and deduct deduct cost at the present value okay so we are going to deduct issue cost we are going to add present value of tax relief on bank loan remember when you are taking a bank loan we have to pay interest on that so when we pay interest that means we are getting lower tax we deduct tax from the income before we pay tax that is called tax relief that means higher the debt more the tax relief it's good for you so that's why we are adding this whenever we take any kind of debt you are going to get a tax relief on that debt because we are going to pay interest on that debt. So interest is a tax deductible expense. It, is, it has tax relief. Same for the subsidized loan. Same. Then, because we are paying lower interest in subsidized loan, that is also good thing, right? It's a benefit for us, subsidy benefit. So for that also, present value of after-tax subsidy benefit. And then finally, APV. The sum of everything is APV. 
so here i have shown this into different workings because each requires working remember base case net present value was working one issue cost working two this is working three working four working five okay remember working and your main answer does not come in the same table put it somewhere separately always because then it makes your work very untidy it's very difficult to find what is working what is main thing like this you can set up a table where you can label according to the working one two three four five then this is negative done so just copy paste then issue cost okay when i click here you see i can you can see the formula here okay or you i can i can show you down also you see here so how did i get this <coughs> i've told you earlier issue cost is two percent of the gross so two percent of external funding don't take this disposal take take this out of 120 so out of 100 2 percent is 200 2 percent of 100 million is 20 million okay and you don't net off if you have seen your previous questions what did we do we always net off sorry we always try to gross it is netted right we try to gross it up here we don't have to do that because issue costs are payable out of available cash reserves they didn't say anything net off or something okay two percent is net issue cost two percent on net amount no nothing like that it is gross amount only so you don't have to gross it up again you can directly take two percent on 100 million which is 200 million that's what i've shown here two million because see amount in million that's why i've dropped the millions the zeros so 200 million is sorry 20 million means two I think it's 2 million wait a minute yeah it's 2 million sorry next working number three this one present value of tax relief so i will show you here you first need to find your annual repayment they told annually you have repaid if you have not repaid annually you could you could have done this in one go how we how we'll be doing later for subsidy tax relief on subsidy loan but because we have annually repaid this you have to do this table so how did we get this annual repayment it is simple what is your amount of loan bank loan 50 divide this by not 4 divide this by the annuity factor of 4 at what percent tell me go here we have to take the annuity factor of four years what percentage you have a choice here okay so it's 3.24 we'll go here and see afm formula we have to go and we have to go to the annuity factor table okay and you have to take nine percent because the amount of the bank loan if you see here see it's nine percent nine percent annual interest rate that's why <coughs> annuity factor should be 9% 4 years. So when you go to 9% 4 years here, it's 3.240. This one. This is the annuity factor. So you divide this by 50. 50 divided by that amount. Enter. It is 15.4321. This is the annual repayment. So now, what I've done is, I've taken the 4 years. Okay. Then, opening balance with opening balance you'll be adding interest then you deduct repayment and get your closing balance like this you keep doing for four years until you don't get an amount zero here why did i get 0 0.01 then or why sometimes i get a little amount more than zero the reason is when you do this calculations remember you always round the figure it's a rounded figure otherwise if you don't round it up this figure comes to a big number right always round to two decimal places two or three so even if you get a small amount here it is supposed to be zero if you take the exact amount and put here you will get zero only because ultimately the amount of loan you have taken at the end of four year everything must must be paid off right with interest of course but the reason is you have rounded up so this small difference due to rounding is accepted in your exam you will still get full marks no marks will be cut don't worry okay you will have some amount 0 0.01 0 0.02 0 0.003 like that 
doesn't matter okay keep it as it is <coughs> so now you always start with the opening balance what is the opening balance of the bank loan it's 50 million i have dropped the millions okay it's in millions so that's why i've taken just 50 okay so 50 with on this 50 you have to add interest interest of how much nine percent right in front of that bank loan they say nine percent interest so add nine percent interest with that bank loan which is 50 so nine percent when you add with 50 you get 4.5 this is interest obviously interest will be added with the bank loan you have to pay with the interest then you repay how much you have already calculated here this i've rounded to two decimal places here and i've written here because this are in two decimal places always when something is in certain decimal places try to keep everything in according to that okay for example my opening balance is in two decimal places interest is in two decimal places keep a repayment also in two decimal places it looks better more professional more neat and easier to understand okay if you want to change it change everything to three decimal places four decimal places or a whole number it's your choice then so you deduct this repayment add interest deduct repayment add interest deduct repayment with the opening balance and get the closing balance so here i've just done a function what did i do i added opening with interest and deducted repayment every so i did this only once and what i did later on i just dragged this to the other three cells below because it will perform the function so then but you need this you need to do this horizontally across now down not downwards you can't do this vertically why because to find the opening balance of the second year which is 39.07 you need the closing balance of the first year closing balance of first year is the opening balance of the next year see here 39.07 39.07 you bring this forward same here this becomes the here this becomes the opening balance fourth year that's how that's why so in the first year check everything your interest is correct your repayment is correct your closing balance needs to be correct then only if first year is correct two three four will be correct automatically because you are just going to take from there onwards then again on this 9% interest on this 9% interest on this 9% interest and repayment will be same 15.43 same function and get the closing balance done then tax relief tax is at 20% so on this closing balance you have to take the tax okay on this closing balance sorry it's not on the closing balance I'm sorry you have to take tax relief on what interest interest so now you see if you would have not repaid this you could straight away take 9% of 50 which is 4.5 and apply tax for this you could took you could have taken the annuity factor of four year and you would have taken the interest tax relief because it would be the same interest every four year right but because because the question specifically told you that there is a repayment of equal amount over the four years your interest changes your interest changes <coughs> it no longer remains 4.5 4.5 4.5 4.5 it changes that's why we did this table you see interest was 4.5 then it fell to 3.52 then it's 2.44 then it became 1.27 changes so because interest changes tax relief also will change right so now just apply 20 percent to this interest 20% of 4.5 is 0.9. 20% of this is this, like that. I've rounded, this is a rounded figure. If you do, you will get some more. So try to round it, round it to two decimal places. Okay. Done. Then, discount factor. You have to discount this. Remember, present value. Getting tax relief is not enough. It is the present value of the tax relief. Okay. So, when you take the discount factor, please pay careful attention to this i have used three percent even in your, ex your in your answer when you review it when you review this mock answers also they have used three percent which is your risk-free rate it's given below but because this bank loan interest is at nine percent you have an option to use discounting factor at nine percent also just write an assumption that you have taken this as a discount factor so there is an option 
you have a choice the choice is yours you could either use nine percent as a discount factor or three percent which is risk free as a discount factor anything is fine you will get the marks okay so when we discount at three percent i have what i did was simply i have used here formula i've i've gone to the present value at three percent this one two three four i've just copy pasted here the amount so this amount will come to three decimal places only this don't try to change it to two decimal places because the table it is given three decimal places okay then i've got the present value i have taken the sum of it and got 2.21 so this is the answer 2.21 which i have taken here also 2.21 same but subsidy loan is little easier because we have not repaid this so we don't have to do this four years calculation which we have done for bank loan okay 1.04 we'll go there now here how did i get this amount only one formula in one go i have got this amount here you can see that figure so what i have done go here what is the amount of subsidy loan 40 what is the interest 3.5 percent rest everything remains same tax will be same okay annuity factor so now we'll go there <coughs> so on that 40 we take 3.5 percent then we take into 0 0.2 because tax and the annuity factor which annuity factor did we take tell me at three percent we have to take the risk free rate three percent so we go here three percent uh sorry we have to go to the annuity factor over four years right so at three percent it is four years is 3.717 now you can't take uh, so if you want you could have take nine percent also but for subsidized they have taken this okay three percent multiply and get this one go for same for bank loan also we we could have gone it in one go but the reason is because we have repaid it that's why so this is the amount and this one is for this one this also in one go we have got that amount present value of after tax subsidy benefit so click here and you can see here what is the subsidized loan 40 you have to take the interest that you have saved the difference see before subsidy normally interest is at nine percent okay with subsidy it is 3.5 percent you have to take the difference nine minus 3.5 percent how much you are saving on interest 5.5 percent 5.5 percent that's why you have to take into 5.5 percent then after tax okay it is after tax tax is 20 percent after tax means 80 percent so you multiply by 0 0.8 and then you multiply with the annuity factor at three percent for four year which is 3.717 because this is subsidy okay enter so 6.54 you see 6.54 then you take the sum function take all one two three four five all this you take some function you will be getting 3.2 at as your apv okay so now tell me based on this whether you're going to accept or reject this project tell me where are you going to write your recommendation you can write here go to word processor write your question number one sorry uh, okay recommend a okay so you can write a label this and then say this line that a p v of the project is write the amount you have to write plus and a minus sign because that sign tells you whether you accept or reject the project so this is a plus figure plus 3.28 write a million you have to write the whole figure okay if you want if you want to drop the zeros and then show it then write just m next to it this will show its uh, million and write the sign dollar very important and so and so the project should be accepted this is your you can also write refer 
excel or you can put a working there okay like that labeled anything is fine because your workings are here but this recommendation you will write here <coughs> and make sure when you're writing it you write like this that it's a rec recommendation like this so it's very clear make sure this is a subheading so you make going to make this bold so it is understood that this is the recommendation recommendation only one line you will get marks for it okay remember this so now what's next let me tell you how this 12 marks which is for calculating app you can collect before i move on to section b okay where we have to write it's a writing i'm not going to write the answer for you but i'm going to show you the answer for you and how to uh, write okay so for abv one mark okay we'll go here one mark comes from here calculating base case net present value then two marks for this ungeared cost of equity to calculate this 14 percent two marks okay because you need asset beta then you need this so two marks obviously if your asset beta is correct only cost of equity will be correct then issue cost issue cost here this one one mark then tax shield on subsidized loan this one another one mark sorry this one subsidized loan one mark bank loan three marks why because you have to do this table below this table was required that's why it's three marks more marks then subsidy benefit the subsidy benefit this one working five two marks then finally apv is just one mark and recommendation which which you have written in word processor this is one mark so together if you add it adds up to 12 marks okay now <coughs> for requirement b where you have to discuss factor that they will consider before deciding the funding whether to approve the funding or not okay here external shareholders will have some marks what is the it is 8 plus 5 okay there's 8 marks so you have to divide according to this that 8 marks will be divided we are not taking the professional skill marks okay that you will get while writing few marks from external shareholder few marks from founding director few marks from subsidized loan provider okay accordingly you can divide some maybe more towards external shareholder then little more you can write for founding directors and even less for subsidized loan provider okay so accordingly you can write maybe three to four for external shareholder then two to three for founding director and one to two marks for subsidized loan provider okay so you need to read your exhibit three for it so let's do that we haven't read our exhibit three i'm going to expand this out for you so that you can see it a little clear yeah. now so this is about about the financing of the project okay now the corporate bankers have approved 50 million bank loan but what about this external capital provider shareholder director and subsidized loan provider they have some concern so we'll now read will go through external shareholder okay they told right issue took place 18 months ago also not very late right very recently and also two other in the previous five year now this group of shareholder they have formed an action group to exert pressure on the board for more drastic change they are not happy with the current situation they want to even replace the ceo also they have some campaign like that but because of just few votes they have lost and they couldn't replace the ceo in the board meeting okay ceo on the other hand is optimistic about the prospects of this right issue he believes by give, going through right issue it, the company will be able to finance the project and there will be no risk to that okay
Now, what about the founding director? They are told that they will not be able to take up their rights due to their personal financial commitments. But they provide full support for this new strategy. <coughs> Subsidized loan provider, okay, they, their objective is to boost job creation. Okay. Job creation in the northern region of the country where many jobs are not created. Okay. So, one feature of this loan program is what? It is open for applicants without asset. Those applicants who cannot give asset as a protection or as a security, it is for them. Okay. But there will be other restrictions then. You are not totally without restrictions also. Some restrictions will be imposed on you. So, they are saying this is relevant for the company. Why? Because then they can dispose their surplus assets. Okay. And those which remain will be used to secure the new bank loan. After selling of the assets, the ones which are remaining, they can use them to secure the new bank loan. So now you have gone through the case study. Okay. One by one. When you are writing also, you have to divide like this. This you have to use as a subheading. This, this and this. And you need to write this in the word processor. So now I will show you the answer. Okay. And then from there I will show you how, to, how this answer was created. Because just reading the answer is not going to help you at all. You need to know how the first point was written, how it is written in different paragraphs, what are the points you need to think about. So let's do that. As this is the answer for part B, you can see that this answer is divided into three separate subheadings. Starting with external shareholder, then we have our founding directors, then we have our subsidized loan provider. Okay. And even this subheadings are divided into paragraphs. But a student, when they read this answer for the first time, how do they decide what to write? How do they know what each para means? You need to know the points that you are writing. First, identify the point and then divide it into paragraphs. One point, one mark, one paragraph. Now, it's not necessary that each para should be same number of lines some would be let's say four to five some could be in one or two lines depends on how much you want to elaborate or how much you can explain so don't limit yourself that i'm going to write only one line for each para or five lines for each para it doesn't happen like that wherever you get more points to write about by the case study write there more wherever you have less write less but try to write the points. So first, for external shareholder, you have read, tell me, what can you write? This case study is about for a bank loan. Tell me why external shareholder would be for a bank loan or against a bank loan. <coughs> at least three points you can give. This total, the whole thing is for eight marks. So out of eight, at least let's say three, you can give for external shareholder. So one is shareholder will be concerned about whether the fund is available or not, the fund availability. So I'm going to divide this here. First one is fund availability. You have to talk about this. You can write this in any order, in any paragraph. Doesn't matter that this has to be first, this has to be second paragraph, this has to be third, nothing like that. Next point you can write under shareholder is control. Remember, if you are taking more and more loans, okay, you have to think about the control that shareholder is going to lose. Next, you can talk about track record. What is their track record? It's very important. When you go for a bank loan, shareholders will be concerned about the track record. They need this. The bank needs your track record. Next is for directors. For directors, tell me. One is signaling. 
whatever they take whether they take more debt or more equity it sends a signal to the market so signaling next information one is asymmetries directors know more than the shareholder or anyone else next action group remember there was an action group which is again ceo next we have subsidized loan provider sub lp under here you can write job creation are they creating the job or not then default risk what if they default because remember subsidized loan are always given on some condition that if you do this you'll be given this much of loan then covenant covenant they'll be worried about covenant so these are the possible points you can talk about but when you're writing your answer it has to be in full proper sentences divided into paragraphs you can't write bullet points like this you can't write points like this this is only your planning your strategy while you are planning even this you don't have to write if you have it in your mind that under this i'm going to write this this points under this i'm going to write this number this number of points and then write it like this structure <coughs> and this also you can write it in any order okay the points the three bullet points for example this could be first paragraph this could be second or third or this could be second this could be first this could be any order doesn't matter so first we'll start with external shareholder because that was the first okay capital provider the question has given you so under shareholder you can see it is into three separate paragraphs you can even use some numbers like this from what you have calculated in a because it's the same case study only the only difference is a you have to calculate apv b you have to discuss <coughs> okay so tell me there was you all you have to use the case study the facts you can't use general answers here so in the case study they have told about right issue isn't it they told that ceo is very optimistic about ceo remember you have to show your professional skill what is your professional skill one of this is skepticism this means challenging the viewpoint of other so because ceo is very optimistic you can challenge his viewpoint if you do it you are going to get your skepticism marks professional is five so one or two marks you can get that's what you're doing here so they told they are optimistic okay so this could be misplaced it's not true so now first para you will discuss about right issue even right issue is funding right they told you can fund through right issues so now you have to bring this topic here about right issue one thing is shareholders can question <coughs> sorry <coughs> shareholders can question why there is a need for another right issue very soon in the case study they told that two times they have done in the last five year and 18 months before this right issue so why there is a need for such a right issue this they can question remember by writing this you are showing your skepticism skill this is how you show your professional skills while you are writing your answer you don't write additional points or you don't allocate additional time to your professional marks this is what you are doing you are challenging the viewpoint of whom this chief executive is optimistic and you are challenging no shareholders can question this why there is a need for such a right issue even though chief executive is very optimistic about right issue and also the next thing they might not even have the funds to take up this uh, uh, rights remember right issue someone can say it's very easy shareholders can sell their right but if okay if it is done remember this means there's a dilution in their voting power one of the thing is here control control shareholders is going to lose control if the issue shares like this through right issue there will be a dilution in their voting power which shareholders may not accept they will not be happy with it so therefore right issue can fail there's a possibility and also if right issue fails is going to have an adverse impact on the share price okay the company share price mention the name of the company always next this is about the project 
So here shareholder is questioning whether logic behind this new project, right? And also this project was based on a forecast. This AB was calculated on forecast. So whether this forecast is going to be delivered as it is or not, answers could be more or less than that, right? So they need reassurance. And also in this appraisal, underwriting cost has been ignored. They have ignored it. But if it's very significant, remember it could be, it could uh, bring your APB to negative also. If you see your issue cost currently, it was 2 million. And APB was something uh, 3.28. So it's 2 million. If you compare it against 3.28 is very significant. Right? So if you have, if you have written underwriting cost also you have included, maybe APB might become even less than 3.28 or negative. To understanding. Then the last one. We have to talk about gearing. So if you are taking loan, this is for loan. The first two was for right issue. Okay. Loan. More and more loan you take, more and more will be your gearing. Right. So currently gearing is equal to industry average. If you take more and more loan, it will increase beyond that also. Okay. So the shareholders may question its ability to repay this new loan. Yes. Are you in the position to repay this new loan? So if you write this sentences like this, the shareholders may challenge, the shareholders may question, the shareholders uh, might doubt, the shareholder is concerned. This sentences will give you skepticism skill marks. Okay. Because you are challenging something. Now, founding directors. <coughs> Here, tell me. Directors may lack the fund. Okay. That is required to take up their rights. So if they don't participate, remember, if they don't participate, it can give a negative signal to the market, to the external investors, that this project is very risky. And also, when the information asymmetries about the project, particularly when there are information asymmetries about the project. Yes, not every party knows exact same information about this project that a director will know. Right? Director will definitely know more than the person who is giving them the loan or the shareholder. That's why this project, new project could be risky, very risky because other party does not have same information as you do. Then, tensions between board and shareholders. Okay. So now we will be mentioning this in the answer. Shareholder action group. Right. They wanted to replace the CEO. They couldn't do. But if, if directors do not take up all of their rights, and still the right issue is successful. Remember, who is going to have more power? The power will be in the favor of the action group. And next time, when he wants to remove the CEO from the board, they can do that. Possible. Then subsidized loan provider. What was the objective of this loan? Main objective is to boost employment in that, in that economy. Okay. So here, whose funds are... Uh, being taken here it is from the taxpayer from us every one of us we are the taxpayer it is our funds that is being used there so government is accountable for any funding decisions made so here company will see whether they will be able to service and whether they can repay the debt and also you have to talk about the credit rating you see credit rating downgraded again so this could be a cause of concern so now through this credit rating and all you are using the case study well. You are giving more and more evidence on the case study. You are showing your commercial acumen. This is how you get this marks. You have talked about credit rating. You showed, you told that it could be a cause of concern. Then you told that it is the taxpayers fund. Government is accountable. They will be caring about whether they can repay the debt. All this shows commercial acumen. Okay. So even though they, they are unable to provide security for asset, there could be other restrictions. What is this? Restrictions on dividend. Maybe they will be uh, told not to borrow more. They, maybe in the future they cannot borrow more. So all this is going to upset the shareholder. <coughs> now, next.
What's the next? Two skills are done, commercial. More and more you use the exhibits, more and more commercial acumen you show. Then skepticism, the more and more you challenge the opinion of someone, you get that mark. What's next? Next skill that is left is analysis and evaluation. This comes together. It's no separate, but in SBL, it comes separately. Okay, this comes together. How do you show this? This will be based on your data. Sometimes data might be missing. Sometimes you might need more data. Sometimes you might be, uh, the data is you have, is not clear to give you a conclusion. So if you use this kind of language, you are going to get this mark, analysis and evaluation. This is there in the last para under subsidized loan provider. Okay, here you can see that, uh, what is it? based on the information provided it is unclear whether the new project would meet this selection criteria okay so using this kind of sentences is going to give you this analysis and evaluation skill always in any paper not just in uh, afm even in sbr even in AAA, even in apm even in sbl whatever the paper you do in acca if you use this kind of language it is for this you have to link this to the correct professional skits okay so if you see based on the information it's unclear based on the information this is missing based on the information this info this thing should have been provided to make the decision this language is analysis and evaluation marks skit okay so all this rest you can read i don't have to do that it's about job creation and all that network wire <laughs> sorry worldwide <coughs> the nationwide net job creation is negative even if you through your project you might have created one or two jobs still overall if you see it's negative so it's about those things then whether such a policy that is to create job would be attracted to government to taxpayer or remains to be seen so you're not very clear cut you're not giving a proper recommendation you're not very sure you have left it this is also analysis and evaluation skill, same. So you don't have to write so much, okay? So that's it. And also credit will be given for the alternative and the valid comments, remember. Alternative also, if you give, you will be given the marks. But I tell you, don't do alternative to the answer that, that is given. Why? Because if you are given, you need a tutor to mark your answer. If you're self-studying and marking on your own and you're writing a valid answer, sorry, alternative answer, you don't know whether it's correct or not. How can you assess? You need certain guidelines, certain answers, then only you know whether you're right or wrong. You don't know that. But if you're studying under an institution or a tutor, fine. Someone is there to mark for you, you can give alternative answers also, it's fine. So that's it for this question number two. My next video will be on question number three. Okay, I think that is also regarding net present value. I'm not mistaken. So. I will see you in the next video with question number three and do watch my previous video which was on question number one on net present value and real option. Thank you and take care and do not forget to subscribe to my channel and do share this with your friends and all the best.